Today on the Tackle HD podcast, professional angler Casey Scanlon joins us, and he's going to teach us about midsummer bass behavior. Plus, he'll offer some tips on how you can keep catching fish in the hottest part of the summer. And as always, we've got your fishing reports for Lake of the Ozarks, Table Rock Lake, and Truman Lake. It's the Tackle HD podcast. Let's get it started with the latest look at Lake of the Ozarks. What's up, everybody? This is Jack Uxa from Jack's Guide Service here at Lake of the Ozarks, doing your uh, Tackle HD fishing report for mid to end of July. Uh, I'm just doing it in my garage, just gearing up for tomorrow. And I uh, want to give you guys a report. It's actually been pretty good still. Um, you know, a lot of people think of, you know, this time of year, the dog days of summer, you know, it's been hot lately. They think we won't catch a lot of fish. Um, it really couldn't be further from the truth. This is one of my favorite times of year to fish. Um, we've got to deal with a lot of boat traffic, and then and, and there's, you know, a lot of people around. People People taking vacations, a lot of pontoon boats out and stuff, and uh, but the fish are really feeding still. It's been good. Uh, the current is a, is a real big factor here on Lake of the Ozarks. Current's been very uh, intermittent. Uh, a lot of times you'll find current on the afternoons, and you know during the week primarily. Uh, that's when they're generating water. Uh, I wish I was out there right now because they they're really biting right now because they're they're pulling current. Um, but you know it's. Uh, it's, it hasn't been bad. I mean, the bite has changed a little bit since a couple weeks ago, since the last time we did a report. Um, a couple weeks ago, uh, this big 12-inch June bug hog monster was really killing it. That's starting to fade away a little bit. I haven't been throwing this as much. I've um, been doing a lot more damage with my drop shot, per, you know, primarily talking about bass fishing. Um, my drop shot... Well, I'll just grab this rod here so you guys can see how I've got set up. Um, you know, that's a one-odd hook. That's an eighth-ounce weight in my, my fingers there. I got a little little knot that I tie on that. And this is a seven-foot medium action rod. I've got either 15 or 20-pound braid. This is Berkeley X9. Um, that's awesome. Goes down to a 10-pound test leader. You know, when I'm rigging my rods, or, or my drop shots in particular, I really Texas rig them. Um, I don't like to nose hook them. You know, I, I don't have enough smallmouth here to really mess with them. I know a lot of areas, you know, people uh, go up north and they smallmouth fish and they, they're fishing their more open water stuff. And, um, you know, and that's, that's, you just rig them differently. Um, this right here, hopefully you guys can see this. This is the needle worms. I still have this one in, in the June bug color. I've just been hooked on that color for a while this year, um, but the needle worms is a, is, a, is a, you know, since we're primarily talking about largemouth, I use bigger worms when I'm drop shot fishing. I use 10 pound tests as my leader. I'm not really dropping down that much. You know, I'm not going to six pound test with a four inch worm. I'm using a, like a seven or eight inch worm. It's, it's a skinny worm. Um, but it's not really that finesse. Um, it's a lot more finesse than like a 12 inch worm, but, <laughs> um, but it, this has been my, my dominant bait lately. I go through, uh, you know, go through about a bag or close to a bag per day. Um, so going through a lot of worms, but they're soft and they've got a ton of action. The bass have been loving them. Uh, you can get more than one fish per worm, but you know, sometimes one fish will just tear up a worm and Luckily tackle HD has a lot of worms per bag and I really appreciate that they float and They got they're really soft and They get bit and that's the most important thing when you're out there. If it's a hundred degrees and you're not getting bit You're not gonna be happy. So <laughs> we've had us. We've had some days where it's been a hundred lately and you, I got to keep my customers uh, catching fish because otherwise it won't go good. Everybody's been real happy lately. Um, have been throwing a lot of um, these uh, these swimmers too. Hopefully you guys can see this. This is on a cute little uh, little Matt Stefan jig head. Uh, you've been using a couple different weights. 
eighth ounce is great, but you know, you kind of mix it up. Uh, and this is a little bit smaller swimmer than I throw some of the other times of the year. This is only the three and a half inch size. Um, this one is kind of a gray color. You know, it's been sunny a lot lately. Uh, so you can kind of throw some different colors, but if you got a lot of, you got a lot of sun, I've been putting on, putting the one with a, some sparkle in it. And it's just a real natural bait. Um, there's a lot of smaller shad out there in the water right now. Um, it, it's this year's hatch. You know, they were they were born back in, I don't know, April or something like that. And they're getting a little bit bigger. They're about two inches right now. And, um, you know, the, the younger bass, well, even some of the medium-sized bass are really feeding on them. They're easy prey. Um, they're not nearly as big as the 7, 8 inch, 9 inch long gizzard shad that we've got from last year. And, um, you know, we caught a bass just earlier today and the bass had two shad in his mouth. You know, I mean, what are you doing eating a third shad when you already got two in your mouth? And, and we, we held it up and it was almost identical in size and color. It was pretty cool. Uh, have been catching quite a few fish on top water also lately. Uh, this is a, a bullet pop here. I know it's upside down, but. You get the idea. Uh, you know, once again, a smaller top water. Um, obviously, it's got treble hooks. So I'm a little scared when my customers throw that one. <laughs> they, they, I had a kid snag me in my arm today. So that felt good. <laughs> um, but uh, top water's been working good. Um, in general, we're starting to see more of a thermocline set up. And so that's bringing a lot of the fish higher up in the water column. Um, you know, 25 foot down is, is kind of where a lot of them want to be and there, from there on up. You know, a lot of people think that once summertime comes around, you, you got to go extra deep and you really don't. Uh, you really don't have to go that deep. Um, some of these fish are just, you know, they're literally on the surface. I can go out in the middle of the day and catch them on top water. It's just a fun thing to do. Uh, I've also been doing a lot of catfishing lately. Um, Man, we've been catching some big old catfish. Uh, I really don't catfish the whole year like I probably should. But this time of year, I love to catfish. Um, the big ones are biting. They're they're coming off their feet. They're, they're, they're coming off their spawn a couple weeks ago. And um, the big ones are feeding right now. The last two days, we've had fish over 30 pounds. Um, and the two days prior to that, we lost a fish over 30 pounds. And we've just been catching a bunch of other catfish, you know, the good quality catfish uh, that Lake of the Ozarks is known for. You know, we've got a lot of blues in this lake. And, and blue catfish are kind of like my favorite catfish. Um, they feed so much more aggressively than normal other catfish, just, just your random ones. I like your channels and stuff. I mean, I've been catching a lot of fish on spoons lately too. Uh, you know, once again, about one and a half, two inch size spoon and I'm amazed how many catfish we catch on that thing. Uh, we catch a ton of them. Now, part of that has to do with live scope, uh, where we're literally putting the bait in front of the fish. And, uh, you know, certain baits like these, like drop shots, spoons, and, and, and swim baits, well, they show up better on live scope than a lot of other baits do. Um, and so, you know, we're able to utilize that technology and, and, and put it in front of the fish that are maybe in front of the boat 30, 40 feet, shaking in front of their face and, and then have them bite. So we're cheating, <laughs> um, but it, it's it's been good lately. Um, fish are feeding, you know. Boat traffic starting to pick up a little bit, but overall, our boat traffic this year has been down uh, pretty significantly. You know, because of the good old gas prices. Uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, gas prices have dropped a little bit here lately, so that's nice. Um, but you know, it's it's July at Lake of the Ozarks, so don't come here thinking it's going to be a real quiet lake. Uh, there's a ton of people, uh, but I mean, gosh, this morning we probably caught at least 30 something fish, you know, had some big old catfish, had a bunch of bass, you know, it's not a good time of year to come and catch big bass, however you can do it, but it is a great time of year to come, uh, bring a, maybe a child or a teenager or something like that and catch a lot of fish, catch a lot of bass. Cause you'll catch way more bass now than you will in the fall or the spring or the winter. Um, you know, a little harder to catch big ones, and that's gonna that trend is gonna continue in, into August, where you know y the three and four pounders are gonna be harder to come by, but more action is, is gonna be the deal. Um, 
but yeah i mean just uh it's been good i'm not gonna complain uh do wear your i got these these hooded t-shirts these things are great keep the sun off your neck uh you see i'm working in my garage i got one fan here i got another fan over there drink a lot of water wear your sunscreen you know concentrate on the mornings you know you know four five six hours in the morning then you know maybe four hours in the evening um you know try to try to manage the heat as best as you can and uh, honestly just don't don't take don't take the summer off because this is one of the best times of the year to catch fish um great time of year to catch bass numbers of bass great time of year to catch catfish i am starting to do some gar trips too they're a lot of fun um i don't do a ton of that but it, it's it's a challenging fish to catch but um you know, i make up gar jigs and we sight fish for them so it's pretty fun to do that and really i don't do it any other time of year except for now uh, i have not been doing any crappie fishing at least not really on purpose sometimes we'll catch some but uh crappie fishing can wait for a little while we'll start doing that again in like you know september uh once things cool off but uh yeah the, the hog monster worm is still a player it's still going to work out in your deeper brush piles uh, drop shot is coming on strong now watermelon red uh, of course green pumpkin it, you know is great i've been still throwing a lot of that june bug that needle worms that thing is awesome um there's some sort of little oil that put on that on those baits that when you put a fresh worm out there the the fish love it and you know you, you're good for about 20 30 minutes and after that that oil's not as strong as it used to be and usually by then you've caught a fish anyways um but they love that smell whatever that smell that they're putting on that bait it's uh it's a good it's a good thing because the fish hold on to that so um drop shot is a deeper bait too i'm not talking i'm not throwing this on the bank okay guys don't be throwing this in like two feet of water if you're a bank beater you know this ain't this isn't the time and place for that this is when they're offshore you know humps drop offs you know some brush piles and uh you know if you got forward facing sonar great all the better you don't need it um but uh i don't know that's about it um yeah, good luck fishing, everybody. Now for a look at Table Rock Lake, here's Matt Fielder. Hey guys, this is Matt Fielder with MJF Guide Service and Modern Outdoor Tackle, giving you your mid-July fishing report presented by Tackle HD. Table Rock Lake level right now is 916.05, which is about a foot below normal summer pool of 917. Lake water temperatures are around 88 to 91. Um, the further you go up a river, the warmer the water is going to be. So you could see some, you know, low to mid 90s if you go way up a river. But most of the lake, 87, 88, 89. Um, so it's definitely middle middle of summer, and uh, a lot of summertime patterns are happening right now on Table Rock. One of the best ways to catch them during the summer. This is a hog monster by Tackle HD. It's an 11 and a half inch worm. They they've been eating this really good. A lot of those fish are, you know, tucked up near the bottom. Some of them even suspended. You can throw this up and they'll either follow it down or they're already on the bottom. And you just slowly drag it. You'll get a lot of bites on a big worm. Hog monster is a great option. I've never seen a t tail quite like it. And I think I'm getting a few extra bites because of this tail. Another good bait and a staple is throwing a football jig. This is a three quarter ounce football jig to be fishing out there real deep, um, on points, off drop-offs, anything like that. Um, football jig is definitely a way to, to go. You can use whatever your favorite trailer is. I like a lot of action during the summer, get a lot of kicking, you know, whether that be a rage tail or a, a super speed crawl or tackle HD crawl. Really good trailers to be thrown on a, a football jig this time of the year. Um, just get it down there in the bottom, three quarter, gets down there fast, keeps you in contact with the bottom the whole time, and you can feel better in those deeper water situations. So fish are deep, three quarter ounce football jig, and a big worm, really good options. Uh, one of my favorite ways, actually it is my favorite way to catch them, is throwing a deep diving crankbait. This is a 6XD, whatever your 
favorite deep diving crankbait is, pick it up right now. You may not get a lot of bites, but you get some quality bites doing it. Um, it's, it's generally a little bit better a little bit earlier in the summer, but I'm still catching quite a few fish on a 660. So you go out there and you, if you find a lot of fish in a school, a 660 will really get them fired up. I mean, you can generally catch the biggest school, a bass in the school right off the bat throwing a, throwing a crankbait. Some of the fish right now are suspended. So you could find you have a big school of them and you're like, well, the football jig and the worm, they're not quite catching them because they're suspended. That's when I'll turn to a jigging spoon. You can get out there, see what depth they're in and just pitch this jigging spoon out. You'll see them on your 2D. If you have forward facing sonar, you can also see them on there. And you'll be able to see your line on that um, 2D sonar. You'll just see you know, your line going down and there'll be little streaks. And wherever those streaks that go like this across the across your graph those are the fish and just jig this up and down another bait you know maybe they want something more fluttering a little bit bigger profile throw a flutter spin it it falls a little bit slower and you can even cast this out a little bit more and they'll come out and hammer this thing they're, they're really eating the flutter spin right now you can catch you know off of bluffs you can catch them in trees you can catch them you know, off of points, docks, anything like that, flutter spin is a really good way to catch them. Another great way to catch the suspended fish right now is a, you know, a swim bait. Any swim bait that you want to throw, whether it's a Tackle HD swimmer, um, this is a, a Divine swimmer, um, a Kite Tackle work, and a lot of times I do like to throw like a six inch, a True Bass, um, hollow belly swim bait. I seem to get a lot of bites in the summer, upping the size of my swim bait a little bit. Um, those are really good ways to catch a lot of fish right now this time of the year. Now you guys, if you guys are fishing tournaments, be sure to really be taking care of your fish. Get lots of ice, make sure to you know, have your aerator running the whole time. Make sure to grab some G-Juice or your favorite you know, supplement that goes into the, into, the, uh, into the live wells. But my favorite is G-Juice. It seems to work the best for me adding that with ice and using your aerators and your oxygenators this will really really keep those fish alive and and keep them healthy um, guys fizz your fish if you're catching them out of deep deep water make sure you guys read up on how to fizz a fish you can either go through the mouth or you can go through the side right here do some research figure out how to fizz the fish and that way we'll keep our fishery healthy and keep the fish alive so until next time, thanks for watching and catch some fish. Now with a look at Truman Lake, here's Dave McCormick. Well, welcome back. It's a mid-July Truman Lake fishing report. I'm Dave. I'm your host here. I'm also got me a little YouTube channel. Come check me out, Fish 30. 120 so tournament videos, an awful lot of time spent on Truman Lake. So last Sunday was the Bass World. I would tell you the lake is like 7.0 high fours or high, low fives. It's about a foot low and it's water temps are very warm, like around 90 degrees. So um, clarity is incredible. I can't ever remember Truman being this clear. So I think we've uh, flushed the system, so to speak, with about as uh, much water as has come through. And maybe that's the real reason why it's so clear. Um, so. Uh, like I said, uh, we fished in the bass world. Joe caught us a big one. It was almost six pounds. Right now, I can't lie. The stand-up head really is getting things done. I can't uh, lie. This is also catching a few fish. As you all know, I like to put a worm on that jig this time of year when we're fishing around those brush piles. So, um, Bridges, humps, brush piles, fishing deep. And you, and you say, wow, Dave, do you have to? Well... It, I don't know if you all remember this. I've talked about it before. I'm going to keep talking about it because it was such an impression when I was a little kid that when you jumped off the boat this time of year, because uh, it was so hot and everybody's jumping in the water, it was uh, impressive to me how cold it was on your feet. Um, and that's the thermocline. That's what I was feeling. Um, and the thermocline will set up differently. On a clear lake, it'll be much deeper and you may not feel it. It may just feel warm all the way. Um, and most of those lakes, you have to fish a little deeper. So the deeper the thermocline is, the deeper you're going to have to fish this time of year. 
Let's talk a little bit about fish care too. If you're going to fish in a tournament, and even if it's a three or four fish limit tournament, you still need to ice the water down. You can't pull that 90 degree water in continuously and expect your fish to do okay in it when he's used to sleeping down in the 72 to 75 degree range below the thermocline. It is what it is. That's why we ice the water. That's why we add the additives to the water to take the chlorine out of the ice. Therefore, the fish don't um, don't get sick. And that's uh, it's just a uh, it, it's neat that that G juice has that additive in it that will take chlorine out of the water. So. If you're going to take a kid fishing, also take lots of snacks and lots of drinks. It's really hot, and I've noticed even my kids, if we go out fishing out noon, they're already losing the attention. So might have to make it a shorter day. But either way, take a kid fishing if you can. If not, get out, hydrate, enjoy the outdoors. We'll have another fishing report in uh, maybe a week or two. We'll see you then. Welcome back to the program, Casey Scanlon. Thanks for being here, my friend. Appreciate you having me on again. Always glad. So uh, the reason we wanted to talk to you today is I, I know you're on the water constantly down in the Ozarks, and this is basically the hottest stretch of the summer. Uh, temperatures outside are in the 90s, if not you know close to 100 almost every day. There's a heat advisory, it seems like, at least once a week. And the water temperatures, I know at the Ozarks are like around 85 degrees, kind of same situation at Table Rock. And as much as, you know, these, this heat changes our behaviors as humans, um, I know it changes the fish behavior too. And that's, you know, just kind of changed how fish are biting. So we wanted to kind of uh, dip into your expertise here and kind of find out first off, with these temperatures being what they are, what are the fish doing now differently? How are they acting? You know, it, uh, that's a good question. So, we, like you said, we're in the uh, dog days of summer now. It's as hot as it's going to get. And uh, the fish are, you know, trying to, you know, seek some shelter from that sun and, and get out of the heat a little bit. So, um, you know, we got a lot of different things going on. So, depending on the lake you're at, um, you know, that, that can vary. But, you know, this time of year, the fish really like to, you know, get deep you know, get uh, out there in some cooler water. And uh, the fish also like to suspend a little bit. So, um, you know, cover that's uh, vertical, uh, such as like a bridge pylon or standing timber, a brush pile, um, things like that. Those objects tend to hold a lot of bass this time of year because, um, you know, the fish can suspend around those objects and uh, chase bait and kind of that open water. So uh, right now there's a lot of different things going on. These fish are also, um, you know, here at Lake of the Ozarks and a lot of other places, we have a lot of, uh, you know, good shallow water cover available. And the, a lot of fish never leave that shallow water. And, um, you know, as we go throughout the summer, we get the bluegill uh, moving up shallow and uh, making beds and, you know, uh, reproducing on a lot of these full moons. So, you know, whenever we have a full moon, there's a lot of fish up shallow. Whenever you have uh, higher water levels or, or um, you know, a lake that's at full pool where there's a lot of uh, cover such as laydowns, boat docks, uh, bank grass, things like that in the water that normally aren't in the, uh, you know, in the water in the springtime or available to fish. Um, you know, anytime you have that situation, there's going to be fish up shallow. And so we're experiencing that here at the lake right now and in a lot of other lakes in Missouri. You know, we have good water levels, uh, higher than normal in some cases. And the bluegill are spawning, so there's a lot of bass up shallow too, which can make for a really good topwater bite on baits like um, the Worldwide Buzzer from Tackle HD. That's one of my favorites to throw this time of year, cover some water. Okay, so with the way that they are behaving right now, I guess this will pretty much continue this way until the temperatures start to cool down or kind of, you know, what's, what's next? Yeah, you know... Um, you know, the bass are constantly moving based on the conditions. So day in and day out, you know, you kind of got to stay on your toes and do some different things, experiment with baits until you get bites. Um, but yeah, uh, these patterns will kind of remain consistent uh, for the next several months, you know, until we get to September or October, you know, those fish will make a, a lot bigger push up shallow. But, um, you know, throughout the summer here, we're going to have a lot of fish uh, trying to 
stay out around that deep water or at least close to it. And then, you know, you're always going to have some shallow fish as long as there's cover available for them to swim around on. Does the same pretty much go for people, uh, you know, myself, for instance, I, I fish pretty small lakes, you know, farm ponds, that kind of thing. Same thing. They're looking for cover. They're looking for what is the deepest point of that water because that's going to be the coolest. Sure. Um, you know, you're fishing a smaller body of water. A lot of times, you know, you have a lot of grass cover, um, you know, lily pads, matted vegetation, you know, a lot of a lot of things that we don't have in some of our bigger lakes here. So those fish are going to seek uh, shelter just like us, you know, like, um, you know, if we're sitting outside, you're going to want to be in the shade. So if there's a boat dock, if there's an overhanging limb, if there's some grass that creates uh, shade under the water, those fish are going to seek areas like that. Uh, they're going to seek out um, brush piles or lay downs or the heaviest cover available where they can get inside that cover, seek some shade, seek some refuge and, uh, you know, ambush cover when it's a, uh, ambush bait when it's available. So um, look for the heaviest cover available in those smaller bodies of water. A lot of times there's not a lot of deep water in those. So uh, finding that deep water or maybe just the best cover in a lake or pond close to that deeper water uh, is usually a good idea. So, um, you know, those fish uh, in smaller bodies of water typically live a little bit shallower. So just kind of seek out that heaviest cover. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so I, I had prepped you before the interview. I said, can you put together a list of, you know, five things or, or as close to five as we can get, if it's four, if sure. it's six, whatever. Um, and and that that's baits uh, and or techniques that you would recommend for right now, this hottest time of the year to keep people catching those bass. Yeah. So what so, do you number five? So we'll, uh, we'll start out with, um, you know, one of my favorite things to do, and that is, you know, look for isolated cover off the bank, such as brush piles, uh, standing timber, uh, isolated rock, you know, things that, that I'm going to find, uh, you know, utilizing my electronics and, and things like that. Uh, you know, these, these pieces of cover uh, are generally in areas that don't have a lot of cover available. So these fish will seek these pieces of cover out, whether it's a bridge pylon or a tree or a brush pile. You know, um, they're easy to get to uh, or they're easy to make a few casts to see if the fish are there and then move along. So um, how I'm going to cover that is usually with a jig. So this is the Trophy Bass Company um, Pro Jig. It's 5 8 ounce. This is our summer craw pattern. It's one of my favorite colors this time of year. It replicates a bluegill. And a lot of times that's what they're eating on a lot of these bodies of water. Um, I'm also going to throw... Um, a big worm. So the hog monster worm from Tackle HD is a great, uh, great choice for that. Um, usually, usually using a half ounce um, or three eighths ounce Bass Pro Shops tungsten sinker, uh, just a worm weight with a five aught Hayabusa uh, 114 offset worm hook. So um, those two baits will get to the bottom fast. They attract these fish. They have a lot of action. And uh, that's what these fish are looking for in the summer times. A lot of action. Isolated cover is always a good choice. Um, Perfect. So number four, um, we'll, we'll talk about fish in shallow. So like I said, um, you know, a lot of these smaller bodies of water, a lot of places up north, down south, have a lot of grass in them. Um, this time of year, the vegetation in the lakes has grown up to its full potential. So a lot of times that means that you're going to have a lot of matted vegetation or, um, you know, weeds that are close or touching the surface. So a top water is one of my favorite lures to throw uh, this time of year. So um, I'll get a frog, uh, the Tackle HD Worldwide Buzzer, and I'll pick out uh, some areas with heavy vegetation and I'll just cover water with the Tackle HD Buzzer on the outside of the vegetation. And then when I get to really thick stuff, I'll throw a frog or even, you know, uh, a tackle HD craw or creature bait on a, on a really heavy uh, worm, worm weight, uh, like a one ounce or maybe even one and a half, two ounce tungsten weight, depending on how uh, heavy the cover is. Awesome. Awesome. I, I'm, I'm happy to see you mention the craw, which I've got a, 
a whole rack of them behind me. I've got the Craws and I've got the Helgramites. Uh, for everybody watching, if you live in uh, mid-Missouri on down through Arkansas, you can find these displays in Walmart. They're in 120 Walmart locations right now. Great deal. We got four packs of the Craws for under $4. And then uh, both the Helgramite, the five-inch version, and the three-and-a-half-inch Nedmite. And all of these baits have been uh, rock stars for me this summer. Just I was in Smithton, Illinois, fishing a 77-acre lake with a friend a couple days ago. And uh, we were both tearing it up on both of these things. He, he caught a catfish on the craw at one point it was everything was biting it so that's uh, awesome yeah. yeah okay so uh okay so that was number four what do we got for number three so number three we talked earlier about fish wanting to suspend so um in order to catch those suspended fish i like to you know use baits that are going to fall real slow so uh a bait like the tackle hd sticks worm uh rigged wacky rigged uh, which is, you know, basically just inserting a hook through the middle of that bait, letting it fall real slow through the water column, or, um, you know, even cutting it in half, putting it on a Ned rig and throwing that around uh, visible cover, um, vertical cover mostly um, for those suspended fish, or even out in open water for fish that I'm seeing on my electronics. This time of year, you got a lot of fish that are kind of roaming around um, you know, the edges of boat docks, things like that. And so, um, you know, a lot of times when I'm in a depth range, uh, you know, earlier we talked about fishing isolated cover and it's very similar to that. But when I'm talking about fishing suspended fish, I'm usually fishing out over much deeper water. So I may still be fishing tree tops or bridge pylons or uh, vertical structure like that. But I'm typically, you know, with the jig or the worm, I'm fishing those baits on the bottom. Whereas, you know, over the top of that deep water, those fish are roaming around up off the bottom. I'm using my Garmin live scope to kind of figure out where they're situated. And then I'm casting to them with baits that fall really slowly, um, like the sticks worm or, you know, maybe even a spoon or something that's going to draw, uh, draw some attention, drop, drop past them and uh, kind of hang in that strike zone a little bit longer. When you do the wacky setup what kind of hooks do you prefer with that so i'm actually using a hayabusa uh, power wacky hook or special wire uh, wacky hook so the special wire one uh, has two little um, you know weed guards on it to kind of keep it a little more weedless i like that around cover and um, you know it, it's just a small uh, kind of circle type hook I also really like a, a Hayabusa trailer hook, uh, which is kind of, um, you know, more of a straight shank type hook. But you really just want to use a smaller hook, you know, somewhere in that, uh, you know, size one to, you know, one off uh, and, and, and fish it weightless. You can add, you know, if you're trying to get it down a little bit deeper, you can add some weight to it by, um, you know, adding they, they make special weights. Uh, for those and, and you can insert a nail in the end of it and just kind of, you know, add just a slight bit of weight to it to get it down there a little bit faster. All right. Uh, I think we're at number two. All right. Uh, number two, we talked about uh, the fish being suspended. So a lot, of the, a lot of these fish are chasing bait fish this time of year and you can really pinpoint them uh, by using your eyes, uh, using your boat if you have one and kind of looking for surface activity. So, you know, I'm gonna ride around, look for birds on the bank. I'm gonna be always looking over my shoulder and watching for bait fish activity. A lot of times you'll see it, uh, you know, real prevalent in the morning where the bait fish are kind of situated uh, on the lake or the creek that you're in. And I'll fish around those bait fish, look for surface activity. I'll fish around the available cover, but usually, you know, they're chasing shad out open, over open water. So it's more about seeing them with your eyes and then being, uh, you know, quick to get over there and fish for them. Uh, usually there's a piece of cover like uh, treetops or a point or some kind of structure that they're using and that they're coming up and using the surface to kind of pin those bait fish and, and disorientate them. So, um, you know, I, you, I really like a top water, like a walking type bait or, um, you know, a popping style bait seems to be really good in that open water and actually the tackle hd fluke minnow 
is a really, really productive bait. When you see them schooling around, you can throw that fluke minnow in there and uh, they'll, they'll devour it. So a lot of times they'll come up for that top water bait and miss it. If they're missing the bait a lot and I'm losing a lot of fish, I'll pick up that fluke minnow and usually will uh, land a lot more of them. How do you rig the fluke? Uh, I usually just use a four or five aught uh, EWG style hook from Hayabusa um, and, you know, fish it weightless as well. I'll throw it on a bait casting setup with uh, about 15 pounds uh, fluorocarbon from Bass Pro Shops and uh, a six gill uh, seven foot medium heavy rod and um, a fast gear ratio on the reel, something like a seven to one or eight to one gear ratio where you can take up a lot of line fast. And, uh, you know, same with the top water, real, real fast on your gear ratio. That way, you know, when those fish come up schooling and you have your bait out, you can uh, reel it in super quick and get your bait out to them uh, before they uh, go down or change locations. Because uh, when those fish are schooling, uh, they're really quick to move and change with the bait fish. So you got to be quick on the draw to get a bait to them while they're on the surface uh, so you can catch them while they're up. All right, Casey, we are at number one. What do you got? Help these people catch fish in the hottest part of the summer. All right. Number one is um, what I would consider uh, structure fishing. So uh, a lot of times these fish, especially when we have current flow through the lake, they'll get out on the edge of points, uh, ridges, drop-offs, you know, any kind of hard bottom uh, situation where you have deep water close by and current hitting that. So depending on the depth um, and depending on the layout of the structure that you're fishing, you can use a variety of baits. But basically what I'm doing is I'm using my Garmin electronics. I'm uh, idling over key locations such as points, drop-offs, humps, um, you know, areas with current and I'm idling along, putting my boat in anywhere from, you know, 10 to 25 feet of water. And I'm looking for fish on my electronics and I want to see them close to the bottom. When I see fish grouped up close to the bottom, I'll mark them and immediately turn around and fire a cast in there. So um, same baits that I talked about on number five, we're going to use the uh, hog monster worm. We're going to use the uh, Trophy Bass Company Pro Jig, usually five eighths ounce, three quarter ounce. A deep diving crankbait is one of my favorite lures to kind of get the school fired up and get them active. And then I'll fire in some bottom baits afterwards and try to clean up. So um, you can utilize a lot of different baits on those fish. Uh, Texas rigs with a variety of plastics uh, anywhere from uh, the Tackle HD Brush Buster is one of my favorites. Um, the Sticks Worm is one of my favorites. We throw that a lot on uh, a shaky head down here this time of year, but the key is getting a bait down to the bottom where those fish are feeding. Usually if you idle over a place and those fish are suspended, they're a lot harder to catch. So the key is finding uh, fish that are kind of grouped up. When they get grouped up, they get really competitive. And when you catch one, you can usually catch a whole lot of them. Wow. Interesting. So I, I like what you said, and uh, maybe you can elaborate it on a little bit more, but you said when you'll see uh, a school of them bunched up there, you'll start out with, uh, with the crankbait to, to try and get them, get them kind of fired up. And then you'll follow that up with something that's going to sink, you know, and that you can bounce around on the bottom. Is, sure. that, the, is that kind of a, a method that you're, you're always following that seems to work? Yeah. And, and that also depends on the spot too. Um, uh -huh. You know, if there's, uh, certain areas have more cover on the bottom than others. So if I feel like there's a bunch of fish there and there's a good chance that I'll throw in there with the crankbait, which is not nearly as weedless as, you know, the pro jig or the hog monster worm on a Texas rig. If I feel like I'm going to get it hung up and screw up the school, then, then I'll wait to throw it till maybe my last cast. But it's usually either my first or last cast. I'll give you that. Interesting. Okay. Well, very cool. Well, we've got a lot to work with here. Um, yeah, hopefully some people can can put these things into motion and get some more fish in the boat. I know that that hog monster uh, is something that I, I really started using for the first time this summer. I, I typically don't fish with a 12-inch a worm, but I was down at the Ozarks right uh, the first weekend of July for the holiday and uh, was out with our buddy Jack Uxa. 
and that's what he was had us throwing all day long, and and we tore it up. So yeah, fish bass of all sizes will in fact go for that. I think I think I was kind of uh, intimidated by it, thinking like, well, unless there's a a huge bass, I don't think anything's going to touch this, and that's really not not the case. I mean, we caught plenty of big ones, but uh, it seems like you can you can really catch anything on that. Yeah, not at all. I mean, you can definitely catch uh, fish of all sizes. It definitely does not target only uh you know giant bass but it will catch some of the biggest bass in the lake and that's one of the reasons i like throwing it um this time of year is pretty much you know i i start you know in late may with the big worm and i'll throw it all the way through october um but at, those are the prime months for it you know when that water temperature is hot those fish like a big meal uh you know if they're going to expend a lot of energy to go off to go after a meal they're going to make it worth their while so uh that that big worm is really attractive to them. It has a lot of action and uh, can call them from a great distance. So one of my all-time favorite summer baits and something that I always have on the deck uh, when the water's warm. Yeah, that June bug color seems to be what's uh, what's working best for me and the, and the other people I know who are throwing it right now. Absolutely. We throw the June bug a lot. Um, really try to match the hatch, but any any kind of purple uh, on a worm is always good. So that's uh, that's one of my favorites as well. Interesting. Um, okay. So, I mean, everything we've talked about, we're pretty much talking about, about bass fishing, but I know there's people fishing down at Lake of the Ozarks all the time for other things too. A lot of crappie fishermen, a lot of people going after catfish. Um, is, you know, is there similar patterns with the way these fish are behaving when we're talking about crappie and catfish now that the water temperatures are 85 degrees? Sure. You know, they're going to do a lot of the same things. Uh, when we have current in the lake, those fish are going to be closer to the bottom. Uh, catfish in general uh, seem to be a lot closer to the bottom. They do suspend a lot as well. So, you know, we're going to, uh, we're going to throw um, uh, a lot of baits at those crappies uh, for them suspended. We're going to throw, um, you know, I forget the new bait from Tackle HD, but that's uh, a great little crappie bait, one sixteenth ounce to eighth ounce um, jig heads. The, the Pro Striker crappie jigs? That's it. It's the brand new one. Uh, just got some of them last spring um, along with the grub. You know, the grub's really good earlier in the spring, but I like something, um, you know, kind of a little more natural this time of year. They're kind of a little little picky. So, um, you know, uh, bigger boat docks, vertical cover is always great. Standing timber this time of year, great target for the crappie. Uh, big boat docks, commercial docks especially, uh, that have a lot of shade. Those crappie really like the shade. Um, brush piles are a key target. Any time of the year, you're talking about crappie. Um, in general, more so than bass, they're kind of a vertical fish. They like to uh, suspend vertically in the water column as opposed to getting horizontal along the bottom. So they'll, uh, they look for any kind of vertical structure this time of year. A lot of them are very suspended. So uh, really, I'm using my Garmin Live Scope and the side view and down view on the garments to locate those big schools of crappie. And then I'll basically fish uh, the jig and the minnow uh, through them. You know, if they're being real picky, sometimes you need a minnow this time of year, unfortunately. So, but uh, uh, crappie fishing's good. Uh, look for big docks, look for them around points, look for lots of shade and, um, you know, keep on the move. Look for active schools of fish. Uh, a lot of guys down here at the lake like to troll for the crappie. I haven't done it a whole lot, but basically they're using, um, you know, either a down rigging setup or, you know, some kind of small crankbait, like, uh, you know, something that dives, you know, four to four to 10 feet and uh, they'll kind of get it out there on a long cast and it'll, it'll get down there to the depth that those crappie are suspended at. And they, they do pretty well doing that. Now, uh, catfish, you know, you're using a lot of uh, uh, live shad. A lot of guys like to troll down here this time of a year. It's very similar structure to bass fishing, except you're getting out deeper. You're using your electronics to find big schools of fish. Usually they're on humps, the edge of the river channel, um, you know, anywhere from, you know, let's say 20 to 50 foot deep. And a lot of times um, you'll, you'll do a slow troll, like one, one and a half mile an hour uh, with, um, you know, a heavy, uh, egg sinker, 
Uh, basically, it's a Carolina rig um, that we would use for bass fishing. So you have a three or four foot leader, put a live shad on there, and you'll kind of troll it through those schools of fish that you mark. That's a great way to catch them. Uh, when you see them on your electronics, you can drop vertically. Uh, same same way, uh, live shad, cut bait, drop it down to the bottom. And, uh, you know, if you're just fishing from the bank or a boat dock, in my personal experience, you can't beat a hot dog or something like that. So anything will eat a hot dog, including a catfish. So that's always a good one for me. When I was when I was down there uh, at Fourth of July weekend, it was my family and uh, a friend of mine's family for a few days. And so we had four days to just fish off the dock. We had lines for catfish in the water at all times. And we tried everything. We, we caught a couple of bluegill. Uh, we cut some up. We put some on live and then I had my, uh, my Kool-Aid, uh, or I'm sorry, no, I did, uh, I did red cherry jello with the hot dogs and, and put some garlic powder in there too. Okay. And, spice them up a little bit. Spice them up a little bit. And, uh, and then we also had, had bought some, um, skipjack at, at one yeah. of the bait shops down there. The hot dogs outperformed everything. I'm telling you. Three to one. Nothing huge. Like I think like six pounds was roughly our biggest, maybe seven, but they it outperformed everything. Yeah, it was uh it was always my favorite bait growing up. Easily available in, in mom's refrigerator and yeah. uh the fish seemed to really like it. And and everybody you know talks about the you know doing the Kool-Aid or the jello with them. I don't know how much of an effect that has. I've had luck with it, so I continue to do it. And for anybody who does that, my little tip to you is do jello powder and not Kool-Aid powder because the Kool-Aid powder will stain your hands. You'll spend <laughs> a week trying to get the pink off of your hands where the jello, you just stick your hand in the water and you're good to go. And it that seems to, seem to work about the same. <laughs> there you go. My little tip of the week. Um, so um, I, I wanted to ask you about this real quick. I saw an article uh, I don't know, a month or so ago about a guy fishing down at Lake of the Ozarks. And I think kind of accidentally, he caught a four and a half foot sturgeon. Did you see, oh, did wow. you see about this guy? Yeah. I, um, I, his line ended up getting that. Up around the tail of the thing. And um, it, it took him like 40 minutes to get it in, but it was about 50 pounds, four and a half foot long. The thing was an absolute freak. And and they do say that yeah they they are in Lake of the Ozarks you don't see them often in in all your years have you ever caught one down there? I never have I've never caught a sturgeon anywhere I've been so but now that I know that they're in here I'm uh, I'll be interested to catch one that's for sure. Yeah look look that up just look up uh, you know stur sturgeon it was from I think the end of April is when the guy caught it and it's actually I believe the article said that was his second sturgeon this one was way bigger than than the first but it's actually oh, second third he's got down there yeah crazy very. um okay so casey when you are not out on the tournament trail uh you're you're based down at lake of the ozarks and you do some guided trips so if anybody wants to reach out to you uh your website the, is the website the best way to to reach you yeah yeah you just uh look up at casey scanlon fishing.com i've got information about my guided trips and i have my contact information on there as well Perfect. And uh, as far as the rest of the summer goes, uh, what do you have lined up as far as tournaments? Man, uh, so we're going to leave for Lake Champlain here in a couple weeks and uh, haven't been back since, I believe, uh, 2019. I got a trophy here behind me from the last time we were there. So I'm hoping to go back there and, and replicate that same success. So haven't been back since. I'm sure the lake has changed a bunch. Uh, huge fishery. So um, it's definitely going to be a challenge, but I'm looking forward to getting back up there, seeing the lake again. So uh, at the end of July here uh, will, will be our final pro circuit event. And then uh, hopefully I'll be qualified for the uh, tackle where, or I'm sorry, uh, tackle warehouse pro circuit title event. That's a whole mouthful there, but uh, uh, it's our, basically our championship. So right now I'm inside the cut for the championship. So I got to have a good event at Lake Champlain and uh, hopefully I'll, I'll qualify for that again and uh, be going there in August to uh, the St. Lawrence river also in New York. So another ph phenomenal fishery, mostly smallmouth. So uh, looking forward to both of those events. Hopefully I get a, a chance to compete in that uh, uh, title event. Absolutely. And uh, for anybody watching that wants to follow your journeys, I know, especially when you're out there in the tournaments, you always uh, kind of show everybody what's going on and, and keep us updated on your social media, which is also 
Casey Scanlon Fishing. So you're all over uh, Instagram, just Casey Scanlon Fishing, and you'll find Casey. So appreciate you being on the show, man, sharing some tips, and uh, best of luck at Lake Champlain. Well, thank you. Appreciate you having me, and hope to see you soon.